Hey guys, it's Rob Will here. Today we're going to be going over how to install and use MS Paint IDE, a next-gen Java IDE that's been out for several months now. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the GitHub page for MS Paint IDE and just go to releases. Right now the latest is 2.1.1, so once you have that downloaded just put in any folder, this is just on the desktop, and first to install it, we're going to go to the command prompt open it up as administrator because it will have to change some things in the registry so you can edit any file you want later and you're going to want to type java jar and then just copy the path that you pasted the jar in and then put in the jar and then just click type if I can actually type just type install then you should click enter it'll take a minute and then right now it just recognized my JDK even though it wasn't ran on the JDK and everything should be good and it did delete the old jar because you won't need to be running that and if you right click it you'll see edit with MS Paint IDE this will show for every file that's not a folder and this will be gone over later so to actually use this we're gonna have to create a program so I'll just make a source folder and the package that we're going to be using is com utter networks uh, I can't type main and let's just create a program of course in paint because what else would you use for this and we're just going to be making a pop-up window for now just an alert box so first need to find the package and the class and we just need to define the main method first and we just need to make the message box first so we're just going to be using j I, that's an upside down P. J option pane. So message dialog null for the parent component. We're just going to name the title demo and MS Paint IDE demo. And the type. There's going to be information message. And of course you need to import it because something like MS Paint ID is not even going to bother with simple stuff like importing. So it's just import java x dot swing and we need to start it. And this should be the full program. So we can just resize this window a little bit so it'll be faster when it's actually parsing. And we can just save it and desktop. Go to the place that I just went and put in the package and since the class name is main, this is obviously going to be main. So you should see the thing right now, the program that we just created. And next we just need to create a folder to contain the meta inf. And this is because once you select a folder in the IDE, everything in that will be put in the jar. So we're just going to call this other. And meta inf. And once you create the manifest, oh, I'm just gonna edit with MS Paint IDE. And this is the thing that the registry was doing. So right now everything in this file will be edited and put as text into this normal file. So whatever we type here will be just converted and put in basically. So like all pro programs, I'm gonna create the manifest version 1.0 and main class and just going to want to expand this a bit and com utter networks main main and there's just enough room here 
and we can just click out of this, scale it down, and once you save it, uh, if you just open it with, of course, nice Microsoft friendly program. And Notepad doesn't like new lines, but I assure you it does have a new line in there. So now we're going to be using the IDE itself. You can just double click this shortcut, which will always which will always run it from the JDK itself. And let's just turn on dark mode because that's nice. So this first option, you have to select either a file or a directory that you want all of the source files to be in. So we're just going to go here. This is just the default where it's installed. I'm just going to go to desktop here, and I'm just going to click source. And as you can see, a bunch of other stuff will be auto-filled in. I'm just going to go through what each thing does. This highlight out directory is just where the highlighted versions of your classes are going to be. It just put it in the highlighted folder, which will be created right here. Uh, the cache file directory is the directory where you want your cached files to be. So once you compile a program, if you select either of these two things, or well, you have to select save caches and then use caches to use them. So once you do that, it won't have to read the file again if it hasn't been modified since the last like usage. So it can save a lot of time in the long run, but I don't really care about that. And the class file output is where all of the compiled classes are going to be going, so then it can properly like put them in an actual jar file, which brings it to here, which is the actual jar file that's going to be created from your images. And this is just either a directory or a file of just jars that you want to use. You can use libraries to make whatever you want. And this compile other files path, we're going to want to change that to other. So this everything inside this given folder will just be put straight into the jar without any other funky business. And the letter directory, you don't have to worry about that by default because it'll put all of the letters that it's using internally inside there. You can just change it if you want to try to modify things, add your own fonts, whatever. And the compiler output, it's just the image that will be created to show your compiled data because of course it needs to show that in an image of course. And all data that's output fr that's the output from your program. So if you just uh, system out print line something, it'll just go into here. So I'm just going to click use probe, which this option just sends basically a probe trying to find the letter P, which is package, which is in every Java program. And then every 25 pixels, it'll go down and it'll scan that for letters. So it can save 20, it can be 25 times faster than just normally doing it. And syntax highlight, it'll just make it highlighted version of your class, which is nice to see. And compile will obviously compile your program. Execute will execute it. So once we click start, we'll, we should have a pop up once it finishes. And I'm not going to use caches or save caches just for demonstration purposes. So once you click start, you can see it's scanning right now. And you should see the demo. And right here, you should be seeing, just click that. Uh, let's just expand this window a bit. So you should see the exact text from MS Paint. So you can see right here, it's the exact text that we put in. It doesn't worry about any new lines or anything because it actually compresses your code by doing this. It saves a lot of storage. And no errors, of course, finished in about eight seconds. And you can see, just see the compiler output. It finished compiling in about four and a half seconds. And program output should be nothing here except package jar in 21 milliseconds because we never actually made it do anything. And when you double click this, because we actually have the um, manifest and everything, it should just show the pop up window. And it does. And if you actually just to show, open up the jar, you will see the manifest, which is the same one as we made right here, and the exact class. And we can just go in the highlighted folder to see the highlighted version of our class. So this should be the same exact thing as the actual class that we made, aside from getting rid of 
any aliasing or anything because it just doesn't like to deal with that and to at least it add that and it's the exact same thing that we had right here except it's highlighted like a normal java ide which of course this is because it's like better than everything else so the next set of features we're going to be looking at is the git features and all the buttons right here so before we get started with these we need to make a readme first so readme.md and then you can just right click it and edit with ms paint ide again it'll take a second to load but of course faster than any other ide here so we can just make this a bit bigger even though we probably won't need it that big if i can actually click so we're just going to make a title ms paint IDE demo, and we can say, hello, this is a demo. We're going to shrink this down a bit, and we can save. And once we have that finished, we can go and click create repo, which just does get in it inside the source folder. And once we did that, we can add files, and we can select the readme and the source. So it'll add both of those to Git. So once you do that, it's just gonna parse the main again. So it's the same exact text as what we had up here. And you can also see that it added the main.java instead of PNG, and then also added the readme. So what we're gonna do for the remote is, first you're gonna wanna create a Git project, I mean, sorry, a uh, Git repo. And instead of doing the normal SSH for the uh, adding it via command line, you're going to want to add authentication to it. And so for this, I added a little thing so you can't see what is added along with inside the uh, terminal. So I have the one with SSH authentication right here. And that just goes to uh, this MS Paint IDE demo repo right here. And you can just click add remote. If you don't have this selected, it'll show the actual URL that you put in and right here. And we're just gonna make a commit message first. Just initial commit via MS Paint IDE and commit. And it'll say successfully committed. And once we just push it right here, it'll just take a second because it needs to upload everything. And we can reload it. And here we go. It's the exact same thing as right here. And we can just look in here and the beautiful formatted program that we made. And this should be about it. So guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for any updates, which hopefully things like Gradle and Maven will be supported in the future and other languages. And if you have any issues with the program, just contact me, I'm Rubboboy. And see you guys later. Bye.